It's the Jim and Terry Show coming to you from the Hobbit Hole Studio in downtown Bob Cajun under a stormy, wet, arc kind of day where floods are gonna flood. Oh, truth of the matter is, uh, Kim kicked us out of her house, and now we're out in the back shed. No, we're just having a little bit of mic trouble, so the audio may be a little bit different today. But this is good, because our subject's going to be outside of the box. Oh, I thought it was going to be intimacy or something. <laughs> well, yeah. We, <laughs> we're shoulder to shoulder we here. We still may have to get married after this. Oh, show. boy. Okay. So, out of the box is going to be the title, and what well, are we talking about then? Well, I was thinking driving here. I feel really bad for the young <laughs> people trying to get uh, homes and 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 trying to get things together. I was thinking about the military not meeting its NATO commitment, which in this day and age, I think it really needs to try to do that. Uh, and then, where do you get the money? So, I thought of a couple of things that I wanted to be outside of the box, but what I would want people in government to start thinking a little differently, not the same old way. In other words, for the military, maybe there could be a lottery. Maybe there could be lotteries, voluntary taxes for various things like military and other health care, you know, that all goes to those specific areas. And then the citizens can pick whatever lottery they want to buy into and get that money back. Would you lower existing taxes? and then replace them with a voluntary lottery? No, I'll tell you what I would do with taxes if it was me. I, I believe in the 10% mark. I would, I would tax nothing but sales. Even Elon Musk gets 10%? Everybody. Everybody. Yep. What you buy, what you purchase. So if you don't want to pay tax, buy yourself a little Volkswagen. Don't get the Rolls Royce. If you want to pay tax, then it's 10% on the Rolls Royce. And this is just sales <clears> tax? What to sale. So what about the businesses? Do they get taxed? They have to they have to pay tax on anything they buy to manufacture or, or anything they're buying to to uh, operate their business. Operate their business. So water and waste they're also taxed on that the same as Only what you purchase. I would eliminate a lot of taxes in my dream world where I wouldn't I wouldn't tax for instance uh, income. There was a time in this country inc there was no income Before tax. World War 1. Yeah. And uh and that cuz I believe in those areas, sometimes giving the money into the pockets of the people may make them want to purchase more, which would mean tax would increase because, again, if you want to buy an you SUV... Your, your revenue from yeah, taxes. Yeah, from, from revenue... Not the tax rate, the yeah, revenue. Yeah, the revenue from the 10%. Okay. Whether it be a rich person buying a 300, a 300, a $3 million home or, as opposed to someone buying a $500,000 home. And then the other thing I was thinking of concerning housing, and this is really radical, and it's, I'm no politician, but it was just an idea, and this was what the idea was. A national bank, a Canadian bank. This bank is designed specifically uh, at the lowest rate possible could be for the purchases of houses or, or human needs, and that's all they could do. All the bank could do, and it would operate on like, you know, 1.5% interest rate, and so that people could have the money freed up so they could afford a home and get a head start on something. That would be a non-profit bank that the government would own, but it has to be restricted so it doesn't affect the profit banks. And I know that would affect the profit ba banks, but we need drastic change in this country of ours if people are gonna be able to buy homes and cars and things that they need for survival. Top five corporations for profits in Canada have traditionally been banks and oil and gas. Can we not deal with them directly and say, could you profit making banks, profit tiering oil and gas, just cut us a bit of slack, willingly? Yeah, who, well, I guess, sure. I, do, I don't know for sure. I, I, again, it was outside of the box thinking where how does how how can young people now ever imagine buying a house? They need your money, Terry. They need my money. I need my parents' money. I did not my parents, but Marine's parents to help me buy the house I had. They probably provided a down payment. Probably paid the back. I can't even remember. Uh, but I needed help. Now you really need help. It's also awful hard to go to a parent or something and say, "Could you?" kind of just put up $150,000 or $200,000 uh, 
on top of my $30,000 so I can get a moderate home? It's really hard. So if you could find another system where the people, it's not just subsidized living. It is, but in a different way. They actually will own it, not rent it. So they're not hostile. It's their property. They're going to want to maintain it and keep it, you know, because okay. you have to have that incentive in there too. It's yours. Look after it. I'm not so sure how far different things are from you and I going through our era. We went through one of the greatest periods of inflation where interest rates at the bank were over 17%. I remember. That wasn't a charge card. Yeah, yeah. Charge cards are still 20, 21%, 22%. 23%. 23%. But interest itself. So I'm wondering, we lived through those moments. And I was a renter at that point when that peak stopped. I couldn't afford to buy a home. Mm -hmm. And that kept me in the rental market. Not to mention going on to school. Schooling and higher education keeps you out of the housing market. So I watched all my siblings enter the housing market while I was still getting an education. And I thought, I will never. I've got so far behind the rest of my family that I am such a late enter enterer into the marketplace of housing that I will never catch up and yet here I am a lifetime later having caught up. Well and the, the beauty of it is is I have a pretty good lifestyle too for a guy that never made a whole lot of money more than maybe nine months out of my life <laughs> but I remember and maybe this is a lesson to the younger generation I moved up to Pefferlaw from Toronto because I could not afford anything in Pefferlaw. I not in, only moved in Toronto. In Toronto. Right. Uh, not only did I move up to Pefferla, I bought a 750, maybe 700 square foot home and raised four boys and had every weekend my mother and father-in-law come up and stay. And sort of didn't expect to have everything. You had dreams to have everything. In the know? course of a lifetime. In the course of a lifetime. Now it seems like people want everything right away. And so that's what I was saying with the government thing. Make it a way that they still have to qualify. They can't just give this stuff away because people will destroy it. Anyways, it was just an idea. Okay, I, continuing the out of the box uh, before the podcast is over, and we're just about there, another three minutes. Um, you said lottery. Use lottery proceeds for various... Did you call them human needs? So it would be housing, it would be food, it would be clothing, it might Actually, be transportation. I said, I said the lotteries to, to things like um, would be for infrastructure maybe or for the military to get to our 2% NATO commitment. Um, that's, I said, a, that's an arbitrary commitment. Nobody signed on for that. It's not a commandment. Yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, we aspire to, to it and we should honor it. But I'm not as hard fast as you are. I'm glad to see the recent announcement. Well, again, it was just an idea. I don't lose sleep over yeah. it. Uh, but I was thinking, I've often thought that the military needs to be strong. We used to, way back in the day, had a strong military out of need because the world was under Hitler. And prior to that, the Germans were a threat to peace on earth. Now we got Russia, which is a threat, and China, which is a threat to democracy, to freedom. We can cover they, Russia and Ukraine war in the Middle East at another one. You're saying finance the military through a voluntary A voluntary. Lottery. In other words, if you don't agree, for instance, you don't agree with it, you wouldn't buy a, vol a, a lottery ticket. Or I'd go every other week or something. Or like something that. like yeah, that. Okay. Or you just want to find And then the government's sources. job is, of course, making an incentive for you to buy a lottery ticket, you know, so maybe show military, you know, hey, isn't it great? You got a special pin on uh, <clears throat> November 11th or something. Well, I was also thinking that. I said with it, uh, and this is all within a 10-minute thought period, you know, just driving or something. Uh, I thought, well, the lottery thing would work because the ticket itself could be a promotion to join the military or this is a, a future you may want to have or to advertise the, the, the benefits of a strong military, the attributes of, of, of a, a good, strong military within a, a, a country. So it would be double whammy as far as promoting itself. Every time someone bought, they're actually paying for their own, the advertisement by buying the ticket itself. Leave it on the table, kids see it, maybe I'll join the military, that kind of thing. To encourage more military involvement in our civilian population? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we had a problem with too many people wanting to be 
in that area. You know what I mean? So that, you know, if you need... You realize the military is killing people. (laughs) No, I know, but it's also protecting people. Don't forget Canada's military a lot was the peace movement. And we still have the blue helmets. We yeah, apparently our, were experts at that. That's our UN peacekeeping contribution. Yeah, so to, to be able to do that safely, don't forget it's Why not... Why shouldn't that count as the 2% NATO allotment? It doesn't. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, maybe it should. And again, <laughs> that, that was just one. I thought of it another mm. infrastructure, in, infrastructure because we, we don't have enough money for everything, but we do if people just want to voluntarily give it. So tax at a base rate, you say 10%, yeah. and then addition to that, but everybody has to tax. There's no tax sheltering. There's no Cayman no, Island every, bank accounts no. offshore. Everybody has to Everybody. Pay and if you're discovered on a banker's list on hiding sa- stuff. Not on income, on sales, on purchases, purchases, 10% on purchases. So if you're a manufacturer, you're paying 10% on yeah. what you're purchasing in order to manufacture the person buying it and and again I say this because if you're doing better than me you may want an Impala and you pay 10% on the $60,000 or whatever it is I still stick to a low-end Toyota and I pay 10% on a $35,000 car and so you want more stuff you'll pay more taxes I want less stuff I pay less taxes and that that I think it would also eliminate this under the table so much seems to be straightforward you know mm. anything you buy you pay tax on and i would go further to say exempt is resales yes okay now you got me i'm not so yeah, sure yeah. about the other stuff <laughs> um, but i will you got me on why should a used car have a sales tax on it why should used appliances yeah. have a tax on it yeah uh, the manufacturing tax tax has already been paid. You paid yeah. that when somebody bought it. Yeah, I and agree. You should not have to pay for it. That would encourage thrift, uh, recycling, reducing, reusing. Absolutely. There's a lot of benefits to yeah, that program. Yeah, so how much money? I'd like to know the budgetary allotment of all this stuff. How much does secondary well, tax on The stuff negative like that? for a left winger like my good friend, the negative end of it is it would eliminate a lot of the need for public servants. Uh, working in the tax departments and that, it would eliminate a lot of that you know, paper. Those employees that you <laughs> rail against are not contributing I know. much to inflation and their salaries are actually taxed. Yes, yes so I know, I know. It's an I was, oxymoron, my friend. I was just saying, <laughs> bottom line is there would be, there would be uh, people lose their jobs. Okay. Um, you've got some good ideas there and I like thinking out of the box. Could that be a theme for a second exercise? And let's go on to solving the homelessness. Let's solve it. All right. See you next time. Jim and Terry Show signing off from...